It's been called a swarm, a gauntlet, and a crime victim's worst nightmare. Intense media interest and competition for stories relating to crime is more profound now than ever before. It's because of increasing numbers of local and national radio and television news channels, a proliferation of traditional and specialized print publications, and a journalistic revolution on the Internet. Hi, my name is Malachi Juarez, and I'm broadcasting to you from the prison capital of the world, Canyon City, Colorado. So I was kind of just hanging out in the YouTube, researching news, learning the news, and I saw this video that I actually found quite shocking. The video is on the MSNBC YouTube channel and is titled Mika Brzezinski Learns About Furries. I'm going to show you the video and then discuss the story afterwards. The Chicago Tribune, 19 people were hospitalized at a furry convention in Il Illinois after what's being called an intentional lake of chlorine What's gas. a furry convention? Did I get that wrong? Oh, gosh. Okay, officials were called when I strong odor of chlorine what? <laughs> spread the... <laughs> I think they had to evacuate the building and everything. <laughs> Sent the hotel guests along with convention attendees into the cold night. Many still dressed in their furry, furry <laughs> costumes. We have a lot of costumers out here with big fluffy costumes that'll keep people warm. So at this point, we're not at all worried. So we've been pulling people into a cuddle, like a cuddle to like warm this yes. baby. No, thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. And giving her our jackets and thank blankets. You. Yes. We just told Mika what the convention was about. She's costumes kept everybody warm. Was the good news? The hotel was Where are you going? contaminated. Hey, guests came back come inside back. at 4 a.m. Police still come back. The matter is a criminal could, could investigation. You, could you check? Could you check on Mika? See if she's okay. She's over there somewhere. Mika has left the building. All right. Coming up, we've got the Mud Street opinion pages. We're going to be uh, searching for Mika. I guess she. She just learned something. She, she learned something important about this world. She just learned something that we all wish we didn't know. She ran out of the studio. We also have Senator-elect Tom Cotton. We won't ask him about this. He's straight ahead on Morning Chat when we return. Okay, so now I'm going to read a few paragraphs of this Vice article by Jennifer Swan about the same event titled CSI Fur Fest, the unsolved case of the gas attack at a furry convention. It was after midnight on a Sunday when the fire alarm went ringing through the halls of Hyatt Regency Hotel in Rosemont, Illinois. Major Lewis had planned on ignoring it, figuring it had been innocently triggered by the smoke of a cigarette. Instead, it was cold outside and she was already in her pajamas, having stopped by a friend's room to hang out before going to bed. She didn't know anything serious was happening until she was told by another hotel guest to evacuate immediately. With no time to grab a jacket, she fled to the nearest stairwell and that's when the toxic odor hit her. It smelled for all the world like the worst pool shock you've ever been around, she reminisces, referring to a type of pool cleaning chemical, like it was eye stingingly bad, even outside the hotel. The Rosemont Police and Fire Department rushed to the scene around 1245 on December 7, 2014, but it wasn't just local law enforcement that stormed the hotel. There were throngs of reporters with bright cameras, hazardous materials, technicians wearing space-like suits, and later detectives from FBI Chicago's Counterterrorism and Weapons of Mass Destruction Unit. It didn't take authorities long to confirm what many convention attendees had intuitively suspected. The intense fumes they'd smelled were the result of chlorine, the oxidizing chemical commonly used as a cleaning agent in swimming pools. The gas can be toxic when leaked into the atmosphere, causing respiratory problems and irritation of the eyes. 19 people were sent to the hospital as a result. And then a little further down it says, When first responders arrived at the scene that night, they used a chlorine meter to lead them to the source of the noxious odor, donning self-contained breathing apparatuses or large face-covering masks attached to an air tank that's worn like a backpack. The firefighters headed into the ninth floor of the Hyatt Regency, where the meter recorded a gas level of 1.4 parts per million. That's about the rate at which humans will generally start to experience mild irritation from chlorine, and can typically only tolerate it for about an hour or so, according to the National Center for Biotechnology Information. Though Midwest furry panels, dances, and exhibits were scheduled in ballrooms and meeting halls on the first three floors of the hotel, attendees booked a majority of the 1,000-plus guest rooms throughout all 10 floors, meaning furries were spread throughout the hotel that night. 
By the time firefighters reached the stairwell of the West Wing, the gas level had soared beyond 60 parts per million, double the rate at which people exposed to it immediately start to feel chest pain and shortness of breath exceeding the meter's maximum reading. Humans who inhale that level of chlorine in the atmosphere risk contracting toxic pneumonitis or acute pulmonary edema, which can develop into respiratory disease according to the NCBI. Okay, so this is the part of the article that I find particularly interesting, especially in the context of the MSNBC clip. The article discusses one of the victims, Ken Smith. Smith worries that violent threats against the furry community may not have been taken seriously in the past because of stigmas that made furries afraid to identify themselves, and fear within the community that authorities will not take them seriously. That's a big problem with things like this, because furries have been so ridiculed and so misrepresented, a lot of us don't want to speak up about something affecting the furry community, he said. If we look at the way we're handled, brackets, in the media, I think we really do count as being marginalized, he adds. He points to a 2003 crime scene investigation called Fur and Loathing, which depicts rampant sexual deviancy and even murder at a furry convention. There was also a 2014 episode of Dr. Phil dubbed Animal Obsessed that he says painted furries as low lives and freaks. One of the talk show's guests, for example, eats dog food out of a dish and another chooses furry conventions over a college education. But for many in the community, the biggest blow to their image dates back to 2001, when Vanity Fair ran a cover story set at Midwest Fur Fest. Many furries took issue with writer George Gurley's depiction of the community as sex-crazed misfits with bizarre fur fetishes. After the Vanity Fair story was published, most furries collectively decided to shun the press, banning reporters from attending conventions. It's the reason most of the people I spoke to for this story were reluctant to grant an interview request, initially referring us to spokespeople or doing extensive background checks to ensure I had no intention of misrepresenting them. And then, of course, there was the sometimes superficial reception to the otherwise horrifying chlorine incident itself. For example, a segment from the MSNBC news show Morning Joe went viral after anchor Mika Brzezinski erupted in a fit of giggles at the mere mention of furries while attempting to report the story. Some furries call it persecution, believing they make easy targets for others to persecute. Nine years later, and the crime is still unsolved. If you want more details, the article is a good place to start. I actually didn't expect it to directly mention the MSNBC clip, but it does perfectly depict my point. Sure, the story is a little old, but even the most recent comments on this video are very blasé, mean-spirited, full of comments about how furries should die, and just general gross nonsense. Look, furries are people. Just regular, normal people who have a weird hobby. And I feel like a chlorine gas attack on any other convention would have led to more serious reporting and possibly even a more thorough investigation. I don't understand how this video exists. It's tone deaf, disgusting, and absolutely unhinged. Thank you for watching.